having started. Hello, everybody. My name is Lorraine Ciprone, and I'm here to welcome you back to the Web Coach Series. Today's webinar is going to focus on some tips and tricks, not only to studying, but also on assignments and assignment preparation. So before we begin, the first thing you have to ask yourself is why are you here? Why are you part of the CGA program of study? Well, hopefully you're here to be an amazing, respected professional. You might be right out of school, new to Canada, or looking to upgrade your skills for a new career, but either way, you are listening to me at the moment for a reason. So the question that I'm asking is how can you be successful? How can you get through each and every course and realize your dream of becoming a CGA? So right off the bat, as you all know, in order to be a CGA, you have a few hoops to go through, and those are called courses. And depending on where you landed on the program map, that will determine how much time you will need to spend in the program. Just remember, the purpose of the CGA program is to prepare you to be successful in the real world as a top-notch accountant. And this is done based on all the course material, your work experience, and of course, on the final exam at the end of the day. So a course consists of all or some of reading, practice exercises, assignments, quizzes, and the dreadful final exam. So yes, the pain does start with all of those courses. Most courses do consist of those components, um, but the first thing you, students always ask me when it comes to assignments is, why do I need to do all those damn assignments? I wonder if I could even say that. Well, the goal of the assignments is not to see you suffer, but they're, help, they're there to help you to learn to apply the material that is found in the learning, learning modules. So let's face it, the material is not material you can just memorize and regurgitate in a few weeks. You need to be able to build on the various concepts through the 10 weeks so that you fully understand the material. So assignments are meant to help you review your past learning successes. For example, in FA2, you still better understand the concepts from FA1, like the fact that debit should still equal credit. So FA2 builds on everything you learned on from FA1 and some more. Same with FA3 and as you go up the ladder. So to help you realize your present interest in learning the material, what you've got to figure out is, do you even like the subject? Are you able to understand the fine points to continue on, etc.? Doing the assignments will allow you to see and utilize the materials that have been learned in a different way and to also see the concepts in action. Plus, if you do really poorly on an assignment, at least you have something to work with so you know what you need to focus on for the final exam because that is going to be your buffer. So assignments, again, help you review your past learning successes. It gives you various methods of processing that learning material and then helps you to review and evaluate yourself so you know where to focus on when it comes to an exam. So what about assignments? Well, it's wise to, you know, do you read the module and textbook chapters in detail first before you begin an assignment? Do you just read the assignment then start looking for the info in the text? Those are basically the two methods that everybody uses. So the assignments, what you have to remember, are going to take time to do, especially if it is a subject that you're not comfortable with. What you need to determine is what is the best way for you to actually do the assignment. Do you need to read the module and textbook first? before you start the assignment? Or do you read the assignment then start looking for the info in the text or a hybrid of both methods? In the past, I used to actually take a quick look at the assignment and then I would go and start reading the module material and the textbook. This way I had an idea of the things that CGA in the assignment thought was important and I could highlight some additional points and it gives me a framework for me to work with when I was doing my assignment. But you have to figure out which of the two styles works better for you or again a hybrid of both. Regardless of which method you use, you have to plan your time accordingly. The assignments that they give you are not designed to be completed in an hour. So leaving it to the night before is not going to work. You will need to dedicate time and energy into completing them and that is not even negotiable. So first and foremost, they recommend about 200 study hours per course for the period. That's about 200 hours or so a week just to stay on top of everything. And let's face it, you know, I too am a student. I'm working on my MBA right now. And some weeks I can dedicate 30, 40 hours. And some weeks I'm lucky if I could even dedicate three hours. So you need to figure out ASAP what all your commitments are and when you are going to have the time to study and do the assignments. The better you do on the assignments, the quicker it will be for you to qualify for the exam. And once you qualify for the exam, you can actually breathe your first sign of relief and then focus on the exam study. 
Now, in the next webinar series, I talk about time management, et cetera. So you're going to have to stay tuned and listen to that on some tips and tricks for that. So again, I cannot re reiterate even more, don't start the assignment the night before. The assignment will take time to do, especially if it is a subject you're not comfortable with. Plus, if it is an assignment that has some type of software component to it, you don't want to be loading the software the night before either, because guess what? That's going to be the time that you can't get it working properly. Follow all the assignment instructions carefully. Do questions in the order they're provided. Follow all the instructions because you don't want to make a mistake that can be detrimental to your mark. Follow all the CGA assignment protocol, especially when it comes to submitting the assignments. So CGA assignment protocol includes things such as all assignments must be typewritten and submitted as a Word document. Do not include assignment questions in your response. Your name, student ID, and assignment number should appear on the first page of each assignment submitted. Choose a 12-point font, such as Arial or Times New Roman. Do not use color in your assignments, because that just makes the size of the assignment bigger and harder for the assessors to download. All questions answered in Excel must be copied and pasted into the Word document. You are not allowed to submit multiple documents, so everything is one Word document. Clearly number questions and double space between them. You know, example, question two, double space, then question three. You should identify all your sub-questions, so part A, part B. It's recommended to insert a few blank lines between each solution for the convenience of the marker. Do not, again, include the question with the solution. Start tables on a new page. For some assignments, you will need to know how to type equivalents of commonly used mathematical symbols, and usually your software can let you know how to do that. Please spell check the assignment using tools, spelling, and grammar. Now, this is a big one. It's saving your file. When you save your file, your assignment for submission, you have to do it in the CGA assignment protocol, which is your first name, your last name, your student ID number, and then your assignment number. So, for example, if your name was Joan McDonald, and I'm going to type this as we speak it, you would do it as Joan McDonald, and then student ID 2222222, assignment 1. So that is what it would look like. So keep that in mind, your first name, your last name, your ID number, your assignment number is how you should be saving your assignments. If you need help, you have to ask for it. Each course has an academic discussion area, and I highly recommend that you use it. Connect with your peers. We all know that the program of studies can be quite alienating, especially since a large portion of the work is done on your own and not in a classroom. So you need to learn to network and connect with your peers. Your peers are not only going to help you get through the courses, but you never know. You may use them one day to get a job. I did. Well, you do your assignment, you qualify to write the final exam, now what? Well, keep in mind, you have competencies to demonstrate. So all CGA candidates, regardless of where they are in the program, are expected to demonstrate each competency at a specified level of proficiency. And every, every CGA module details out at the start of the module the particular learning objectives and for each objective how you will learn the material. So this particular example of learning objectives came from FA1, Financial Accounting 1. And what does this mean on an examination for you? Why do you care about these learning objectives? Is It helps you to prepare the mastery of both the conceptual and technical aspects of the topic, including the specific details you need to know. The skills that you develop and are going to be examined at the various levels include comprehension, application, analysis, synthesis, and evaluation. So in this example above, you see 3.1 gap and the need for adjustment. You will notice that it is telling me that I have to know this at a level one. And then we've got adjusting entries also at a level one. So I've got to really master that. And I'm going to go through the levels in a moment. Another level one. But here, for the worksheet, I need to know it at a level two. Well, what's the difference between a level one and a level two? Let's go through all that and figure it out. So level one means it is essential. you got no way around it. You've got to obtain an in-depth understanding of the concepts and the principles. You have to develop a sound conceptual and comprehension 
um, comprehensive technical knowledge of the procedures. You must become proficient in the application of the knowledge. And you have to become proficient users of the reference documents and sources for further study. What this means on an exam is that you need to be prepared to demonstrate mastery, again, of both conceptual and technical aspects, including that specific detail I was talking about. Keep that in mind. Level one is the highest level, the most, most in-depth, that you have to know everything when it comes to that particular learning objective. What is level two? Well, level two means that you have to attain a broad understanding of concepts, principles, and procedures, develop a working knowledge of procedures, identify common reference documents and sources for further study. So you need that broad overall comprehension. And on an exam, here you've got to have that concept of the topic and apply those skills. Skills that you develop and examine at this level are comprehension and application. It's at a lower level than that level one. Now level three does exist, and level three says background knowledge. You should identify common reference document and sources, acquire a general knowledge of those broad topic areas. On the exam, you're not going to get any in-depth questions on a level three topic. So here you just have to have that recall and general knowledge. So how are you going to learn all of this stuff? Well, this diagram here is a learning pyramid. And this diagram, the learning period itself, pyramid itself, sorry, describes how a person can learn and retain information. And recall is lower for lectures than any other instructional approach because lectures leave you, the students, as what we call passive consumers of information. So you're not really rehearsing that information. And it's just at a recall rote level. All you're doing is taking information from the teacher's words, maybe putting it into written notes, and back and forth. Now, retention will improve when the students are presented with information in both verbal and visual forms. And here you are learning more because you are now more actively involved in the actual learning. So lecture at the top, you'll notice at the tip, not so much happening here, but that as we go down through reading, audiovisual, demonstration, discussion, practice doing and teaching others, the lower down the pyramid you go, the higher your retention level. So the more you do with the information in your course modules, the more likely you're going to remember and learn it. So I say one way to do this is by attending those online webinars or downloading the um, lectures, depending on where you are, uh, which course you're in. Some courses, uh, Pace Level and Up, have online webinars. And the courses that are in the foundation level don't have webinars, online webinars. They have the um, audio files that you can review and listen to. So keep doing the tasks and activities that will move you down the pyramid. So this will enable you to master the material because mastering material is the name of the game. So things that you should keep in mind, again, studying tips, and I'm going to go through a lot more of this in the next webinar, is you have to have a good approach to studying. You have to stay positive. Keep this approach as positive as possible. If you just dread opening up a textbook to study, trust me, studying will be painful. When in doubt, just think, I finish this, then I'm down another course, and I will be one step closer to my designation. Again, I'm doing my MBA, folks, and when I had nine courses to go, I'm doing it through Edinburgh, you know, I would dread because I'm thinking, oh, my God, there is no end. And as I knock down each and every course, I'm down to my last three, I start to feel more and more motivation because I now see the end of, uh, light at the end of the tunnel. Keep that in mind for your CJ designation. I know it can be tedious at times, but trust me, stay positive. There is an end. Where are you going to even study? Do you need it to be in a quiet room or a library or in a noisy atmosphere? Whatever it is, go there to be successful. It can be really hard to get that perfect study spot, especially if you have roommates or children. But do try to carve out a little time each week in that environment. Create outlines, study notes, do some of your own recording. So some of you will create the outlines to keep information straight. Others may create study notes. And study notes can be electronic or even on paper. Some of you may take the material and write questions and answers, even put points on cue cards. If you are an audio learner, you may choose to record important points and play them back over and over again. 
regardless of the method, you need to put the time in to create those study notes, those cue cards, or those recordings. Unfortunately, this is something that only you can do for it to be very effective. And I'll talk a little bit more about how you learn shortly on in this webinar. Use memory games or, or mnemonics. Now, face it, if you have lots of stuff to memorize. It's just incredible. So you can use memory games or mnemonics. And mnemonics are devices such as a formula or a rhyme used as an aid in remembering. For example, this is a very famous mnemonic, if you took music. And it is, every good boy deserves fudge. So by taking the first letter of each word in the rhyme, it gives you the five notes for the treble clef. E, G, B, D, F. For those of you that don't know music, you've now learned something new. Practice, 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 practice. You won't really learn anything until you use it, so practice. And the more you practice, the better you're going to be, and that is what it's going to take to get you where you need to go. Create your own questions or review assignments. You know, old exams, etc. I always sit down and create exams for myself. This gives me an idea um, of seeing the material as a question or as a statement and me then having to apply that. So I actually create questions as I go through studying and I put them aside. And once I've gone through every chapter or module in this case, done all my questions, then I go back and start from the first module. Because I've either relearned that material going through the future modules, because sometimes they build on each other, or I don't know what the hell is going on, and then I have to turn around and start learning that material from scratch. But that is something, a strategy that you could figure out would work best for you. Make a schedule that you can stick to. You have to stick to it. It's not worth creating a schedule that you can't follow. Find the time. Even if it is half an hour or over your lunch break, just remember, you will need to find the time to do it right the first time, or you're going to have to find the time to do it all over again. How do you process the material? Well, first of all, what's the heading on the title? You've made your schedule, you find the time, how do you get through it? Well, you start with figuring out the material, and the first thing that I would look at is what is the heading. That's going to give you the focal point of the material that you're going to be studying. Then you turn around and have to figure out what are the key words that jump out at you. When reading the paragraphs of information, what are those key words that jump out at you? That is the information that you are going to be focusing on throughout this processing of the material. Then you have to figure out, do you even understand them? Do you understand what the words mean and how they all connect together? Are they the key words of information that you should know from your past studies and need to brush up on? Or is this just brand new material that you've got to figure out? What do you, you got to ask yourself, what do I know about this already? So speaking again of those past courses, do you know or are you familiar with the material already? If so, are you comfortable with it or not? My nightmare courses in um, the CGA program, believe it or not, was cost management. Anything to do with managerial accounting, cost accounting, etc. I hate it. It was tortured. I got it. It just tortured me. So, you know, when I did MA2, I had to go back and basically relearn and go through everything for MA1 because I needed that ability um, and to refresh myself because it was material that I was not comfortable with. Now, FA, loved FA 1, 2, and 3. That's where it, you know, ended for me. What other subjects can you relate this to? Is this, can this be, or was the material done in a previous module? Or again, it could have even been a crossover from an entirely different course. The more you can link things together, the more it becomes real for you. What kind of resources and information are going to help you? What are those other sources and tools that you can use to assist you in developing your understanding of the material? Some of the resources can be found right on the CJA website. Sometimes it's a quick Google search on a topic or a term. Will I need to look for additional resources? And you know what? Sometimes you have to. But again, it's something you have to be in charge of. You have to be in charge of your learning, and that's something you may have to do to assist you. Well, what about summarizing? As you process the material, you need to determine what will help. Summarize the material in the notes by hand or on the computer as you work through it. By doing so, it'll cut down on so much of your time later on. Review. Do you review it all at that point, or do you review it all over time, or just at the end? You should constantly be looking at the material and reviewing it. 
Stop and evaluate your comprehension of the material. Is the material logical? Do you get it? Do you comprehend what is going on and how to even apply it? Break and come back to it at a later time. Do you need to take a break and return later? Because there have been times when I've been trying to resolve uh, an answer and I know I'm wrong and I can't figure it out. I take a break. And this is where it's helpful when it comes to assignments and not doing them the night before. Take a break. Step away. Go through it again. And then you'll notice things may actually start to come together. And I don't know about you, but I start dreaming at night about things. And um, I would be literally dreaming through my nose. It just freaks me out. But I seem to be able to process them once I've gone to bed. Find other students and discuss it. Do you need to discuss it with somebody else? You can meet up with other students in the discussion board or in a group study in order to process the information. All of that can help you. Worst case, you may need to speak to a teacher, a tutor, or a SME. A SME is a subject matter expert. So if you realize, are you having difficulty? And if so, you may need to connect with them. They are just going to, there are just going to be some courses that you may need to find someone to provide you with help or assistance. Again, as much as I like the financial accounting courses, FA4 was the one exam that I didn't pass the first time around. Yes, even us CGAs have filled an exam here and there. And I just couldn't wrap my head around some of the concepts, and I did need extra help big time. So I, again, I failed the exam the first time I wrote it, um, but it took that failure for me to realize that I needed to, you know what, reach out and get that additional help. And I, and I did. I got that help because I thought I could pull it off, but obviously with a fail, I didn't. So it turns out that I couldn't, so I got that help I needed, and I did pass it the second time. By the way, I went into labor in that final exam. So what about early review? Start your review as early as possible. If you process the material, Start the review because this way you don't wait until the 10 weeks are into the program and start studying. Because if you do that, you're going to panic. And the more you panic, the more stress you put on yourself, the less successful you may even be on that final exam. So I recommend doing a short daily review. Pick a few things and try to review or go over them on a daily basis. Maybe a concept or two or a few pages. Anything and everything actually helps. Break down all that studying into bite-sized chunks and this will make your chances of success higher. Besides, again, it is very overwhelming if you have hundreds of pages in front of you versus, you know, 10. Read the materials before you attend any wet live lectures or even a review session. So if you're attending the live lectures, you should look at the material. This serves a few purposes. One, if you didn't understand something when you went through it by yourself, you'll be able to ask the prof, the lecturer, for additional detail when the material comes up during the lecture. If something was not clear during your reading, by now hearing the material, it may all click in for you. But sometimes just that little bit of additional explanation will do it. You won't feel overwhelmed during the lecture because depending on the course and the module, it can be a lot thrown at you all at once. And if you've seen the material prior to it, then it will only enhance your understanding of it. Again, review the material with the group. Create or find a study group. Some students do feel that if they work or they work um, with others or study with others, um, then they're able to learn the material better. Personally, I'm a loner when it comes to studying, so group work was never good for me. But then I had some of my friends that swore by it, and they all had their little groups, and they all met even virtually online. Conduct a major review. Plan for this major review. You will need to do at least one major review of all the material. And you know what, guys? Don't do it the night before the exam. You will find that if you've been studying all along, then the major review may actually go quite quickly as you realize you know most of the information. So the next few things I want to just quickly touch upon is learning style. It's really good if you are able to figure out what is your learning style. And this little, this little um, uh, comic I like as we start a new school year, Mr. Smith, I just want you to know that I'm an abstract, sequential learner and trust that you'll conduct yourself accordingly. So again, what is your learning style? What is a learning style? Well, a learning style is a consistent way in which a person perceives, conceptualizes, organizes, and recalls information. And we have three common types of learning styles. There's the visual, the auditory, and the kinesthetic. And 
it's, you know, some people say there's actually four, read, write is another one, but it breaks it down mainly to three. So some of you are visual, some of you are auditory, and some of you need to do is what it is. So there is so much literature out there, um, but these are the types, the, the learning types that are, again, the most common. So if you figure out what your learning style is, and it can be a combination of them, you can actually tailor your studying in such a way to be successful. So let's just walk quickly through them before we end today's little session. So the first one is, well, it's visual. So you've got your blah, 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 blah. And in the, for these kinds of learners, you can say whatever you want to them, but a picture to them is worth a thousand words. So visual learners attend to information most effectively when they see something so, for example, pictures, diagrams, films, videos, demonstrations. So, if you are a visual learner, usually the characteristics include you remember what they see rather than what they hear. They remember diagrams and pictures. They prefer to read and write rather than listen. They have trouble remembering verbal instructions. Need an overall view and purpose before beginning a project. They seem to like art more than music. And sometimes tune out when trying to pay attention. So your study tip for a visual learner, if this is who you are, you should be taking notes as much as you can. Use colors to highlight important points. Pay attention to diagrams, charts, and pictures that you find in your textbooks and module notes. Use mind maps with colors and diagrams to help you organize information for an assignment or even for revision for an exam. Put summaries and mind maps on the wall in your study area and use a wall planner because you need that visual cue to keep you motivated. Well, what if you're an auditory learner? you got to hear things. So here, I think I learned a lot in this lecture because they actually heard the material. And I know it's a little hard when you are doing online studies, but that's why you should be listening to the audio lectures or participating in the webinars or downloading them after the fact if you can't participate. So auditory learners are more interested in learning through spoken words, and they prefer to learn by listening to their lecturer or teacher or other students. So some of the characteristics of auditory learners are can follow verbal instructions easily, like to hear someone explain and like explaining to someone else, like debating and discussing with others, tend to talk to themselves while working, enjoy reading aloud, and they like music more than art. So study tips if you are an auditory learner, start or join a study group. Say things out loud to remember that information. Use a tape recorder and record yourself reading text or discussion issues with others. Read notes aloud when studying, and after you've read something, summarize it out loud so you're hearing it. Explain or retell something you have learned to someone else, and if possible, listen to those podcasts and to those lectures. Last but not least, we have that kinesthetic learning style. And here it says, forget the manual, I'll work it out. You learn by doing. You love to be involved in activities. So you need to apply information and make it your own by constructing something or practicing a technique or skill. This is great for me because I like, for me to learn, let's say, math or accounting or whatever, I like the problem. I like actually writing it out and doing it and solving it and fixing it. This is the kind of thing that I needed to do. You could have said it to me all you wanted. I could read it all you wanted. I could hear it all you wanted. Till I actually did it, I didn't really learn it. So often they take notes or even drop pictures or doodle while listening. They remember best what they did. They memorize by walking and seeing. And they like that hands-on activity or group interaction. So study tip here is test your learning by applying it or transforming it to another form. For example, use lecture notes or reading to draw a diagram, flowchart, or even construct a model. Again, start or join a study group. Relate facts or theories to your own experience. Learn or memorize information by teaching or telling someone else. And when studying, you've got to take those frequent breaks. This is helpful not only for this learning style, but really for every learning style. So what you need to do, folks, is you've got to figure out which of the learning styles you are. Are you visual? Are you auditory? Or are you kinesthetic. And that will help you formulate how you are going to get through this course material. So hopefully, folks, I was able to assist you with assignments and a high-level study info with learning styles. Thank you so much for listening to today's Web Coach Seminar. And shortly, the next one will be live. And the next one will be on developing good study habits because you all want to do well in studying up to this exam. So everyone, have a good night. 
or a good day depending on when you're listening to this, and I will talk to you all soon. Cheers!